The Hong Kong Sevens is the city's landmark sporting occasion. In terms of exposure globally, nothing else comes close. Every year, at least those not disrupted by pandemics, tens of thousands of fans descend on the city from all four corners of the world for a week of fun, frolicking and some rugby. There are lots of Rugby Sevens tournaments all over the world, but Hong Kong has still this very special place amongst all of them as the, the Blue Ribbon Sevens event in, in the world, something which we're obviously extremely proud of. So, here's a quick guide to the Hong Kong Sevens and why this week stands out from all the rest. Think of rugby and the stereotypical images of 30 large individuals crashing into each other repeatedly over the course of 80 minutes, interspersed with long periods of standing around or butting heads like rutting stags. Sevens is the Gen Z version of the game, sped up so it doesn't require long periods of concentration and with enough points scored to keep even the most demanding armchair supporter happy. Seven players aside, seven minutes aside, it's fast, it's furious, and it's ideal for the casual fan who can't be overly bothered with the intricacies of the longer version of the game. The Rugby Sevens is well suited because it's very fast, it's very exciting, there's lots of tries, there's lots of things to, to watch and, in, and enjoy. You know, you don't get a nil-nil um, result in, in Rugby Sevens, there's always lots of stuff going on. The City and the Sevens are intertwined in a way the best sporting occasions and their venues often are. But because the Sevens has been played in Hong Kong for 47 years, it has the history other tournaments can only dream of. The Sevens has also played host to some of the finest players in the game, including arguably the most famous, Fiji's Waisali Serevi. Hong Kong is such an international city. All of the teams from around the world, when they come here, find uh, that they have great support. So it doesn't matter whether it's France or Australia or Great Britain, New Zealand, USA, the, the expatriate groups in Hong Kong get very excited when these teams come here. They have lots of functions to welcome them, the consulates, the chambers of commerce, the societies. And then when they get in the stadium, they've all got their own crowd of support. By its very nature, Sevens involves long days and multiple quick-fire games where teams play several times and the action can feel non-stop. If you mix that with a 24-hour city like Hong Kong, then three days of rugby becomes three days of early starts, late finishes, parties that blend into one another, and socialising that lasts for days. Couple that with the tournament being held over a weekend, and you have a recipe for an occasion that is about far more than just sport. Hong Kong prides itself on its vibrant, um, it's nightlife, the bars, the restaurants, um, and, and I think that, so it's kind of taking the spirit of the city and putting it inside the stadium for three days, if that, if that makes sense. And I think that, so it's this mutual love affair. The people of Hong Kong love the Sevens, and the Sevens love Hong Kong. The teams absolutely look forward to coming to Hong Kong, that they know they're gonna enjoy a, an incredible atmosphere in the stadium. Hong Kong Sevens generates hundreds of millions of dollars for the city's economy through hotel stays, restaurant visits, shopping, drinking and transport. Almost every sector benefits from the tournament. Its absence during Covid was felt across the city, not just by the larger institutions, but by family businesses as well. Not even the Hong Kong Rugby Union, which cut its staffing levels by 50%, was immune. The Sevens though is going to change. Next year will be the last event held in Hong Kong Stadium before an expected move to a new 50,000 seat venue at Kai Tak. What that will do to the tournament is still being debated. The loss of the iconic South Stand could ruin the unique atmosphere. The relatively isolated new location will make returning to the city's night spots harder at the end of the day. And then there are World Rugby's changes to the sport that can mean Hong Kong will end up hosting an event its teams cannot play in. So will tens of thousands of Hong Kongers show up without having their own local heroes to cheer for? Will organisers be able to find 15,000 more fans to fill the new stadium? Or will the Sevens fade away to be nothing more than a memory of happier times? These are questions for another day. This year, it's enough to cheer for the Sevens roaring back to its glorious best.